I'm Stephen Foskett, the organizer of Tech Field Day, and we are here in Santa Clara, California for Tech Field Day, November 2016. <clears throat> if you'd like to learn more about Tech Field Day and what we're doing here, I urge you to come to techfieldday.com. You can find a series of videos just like this at youtube.com slash techfieldday. This event brings together a panel of a dozen independent writers and speakers from around the world to meet with interesting enterprise IT technology companies to discuss technologies, to learn about things, to show demos, and to share things with the world. Thanks for watching. So the first part of the session is, uh, is a recap on our vision and where we're going. Um, so it's good we have a couple of new audience members here. Um, well, there's probably new members in the audience, and uh, uh, many of you are new here. So it's good to recap what Cohesity is about. So let's start with that. So first of all, about Cohesity, uh, our mission is to redefine secondary storage. And I will even define the term secondary storage in my next few slides. Uh, it was founded by me uh, uh, three and a half years back. Uh, my background, uh, I was uh, the co-founder of uh, Nutanix, and I also helped uh, pioneer the concept of hyperconvergence along with the rest of my team. In past life, I've spent uh, a number of years at Google helping build the Google file system. If you store any data on Google, uh, it probably touches the Google file system somewhere, uh, be it Gmail, YouTube, or, or whatnot. We are backed by top tier VCs, um, Sequoia, Excel, Google Ventures, Artis, Wing, Qualcomm, a number of top tier VCs are behind us. We have a very experienced team uh, building this system as well as building our business um, you know, team. A uh, number of people joined us from Nutanix. 30% um, of our engineers come from Google. A bunch uh, came from VMware, uh, NetApp, and uh, uh, a number of our business guys came from EMC. So very strong team uh, of people building this company. And we are very proud to announce uh, a number of customers, uh, you know, that's on the right, we have a bunch of logos, that's only a subset. 80% uh, of our uh, customers tend to be enterprise customers, so we are uh, very flattered to see uh, traction, uh, a huge traction in enterprise, so it kind of points to the product market fit that we have, and it points to the relevance of the problem that Cohesity is solving. So we have big names, Western Union, Shutterstock, uh, Credit Acceptance, uh, and a number, uh, a, a number of more customers that are not on, on, on those logos out there. So, so with that, let's start talking about uh, Cohesity a little bit. So to motivate the problem uh, that Cohesity uh, is solving, let's look at the storage in the data center. We draw an analogy uh, of the storage in the data center to an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg is what we refer to as uh, primary storage. That's the part where we run, uh, our customers run our mission criti uh, critical apps. These are the apps that require strict SLAs. This is where we have vendors like my last company, Nutanix, uh, also other vendors like Pure Storage, and a number of other notable companies that operate in that space. But the bulk of the storage in the data center is, is not production storage. It doesn't run mission critical stuff. This is storage where the apps don't require strict SLAs. And that's the part that we refer to as secondary storage. Sometimes people think that that's just passive stuff like backups. Yes, it includes backups, but it also includes a bunch of uh, other work workloads. For example, uh, test and dev is, is included in that. Uh, and and uh, notice that most test and dev, it's OK uh, if you violate the SLAs once in a while. It still requires high performance, but once in a while, the SLAs can be violated for test and dev. And that's why we categorize it as part of secondary storage. Similarly, analytics. Uh, the bulk of analytics is not real time. It's OK where you've spent four hours crunching through some data. It's OK to spend 10 more minutes or half an hour more. Um, and so we put it as part of uh, secondary storage. Uh, archiving or uh, you know, long-term retention of data is part of secondary storage. Um, Non-mission critical file shares, uh, also part of secondary storage. Uh, cloud, uh, you know, a lot of the activity that happens in the cloud is secondary in nature. So we try to put it in, in secondary storage. That's our definition of secondary storage. So let's look at the problems that plague secondary storage today, the reason why Cohesity exists. So the first problem is that of fragmentation. Each of those workflows that I show as part of secondary storage is catered to by a different vendor. Right? Uh, even within backups, we have fragmentation. Uh, our customers have to go to one vendor to buy backup software, another vendor to buy a media server on which to run that backup software. 
and then another vendor to buy storage uh, on which to put the backup data. So when, even within backups, there is fragmentation. But to uh, maybe do a test and have a platform, they have to buy uh, a, you know a system from another vendor. Uh, to put up an analytics platform, it's one more vendor. So the bottom line is that secondary storage is very fragmented and our customers are juggling multiple vendors, they're juggling multiple licenses, they have to deal with multiple UIs and it's a big manageability headache. That's the first problem. The second big problem in the space is that of inefficiency. Uh, let's think about it. Uh, you know, backups typically tend to be done during night. Uh, maybe test and dev and analytics are run during daytime. My point is, we are not even using all our infrastructure all the time. That's inefficient. Another aspect of inefficiency is the fact that backups today are no more than an insurance policy. People spend billions of dollars worldwide on their backup infrastructure, and yet that infrastructure is not used to do anything more. It's only used when uh, we lose some data or when data needs to be retrieved for compliance purposes. That's very inefficient. Uh, so backups are no more than an insurance policy uh, waiting to be used. Uh, in the steady state, they just you know sit there eating dust in the uh, in, in the data centers. Very inefficient. Yet another aspect of inefficiency is the fact that whatever is being backed up, it's the same data that developers are running their test and dev environments on. It's the same data that we are running analytics on. And since all these systems are siloed, we essentially have copies throughout the data center. Copy data management has been recognized to be a big problem. IDC just came out with a report earlier this year saying that people spend $50 billion more on keeping these copies than they would if there were uh, none of these unnecessary copies, right? So all these are you know, grouped together under inefficiency. The third big problem in this space is that of dog data. And that is a problem which refers to the fact that our customers don't know what's going on in that lower part of the iceberg. They don't know how many copies they have. Uh, they don't know what parts of uh, their, um, uh, what, why the data in the secondary storage is increasing the way it is. Uh, they don't even know if uh, any uh, part of their secondary storage doesn't comply with their security policies. For example, try asking a bank Hey, do you have any social security numbers stored in plain text in any part of secondary storage? They can't answer that. Because to answer that question, they have to copy the data out of all those silos, put it in some sort of analytics platform, and then run a complicated MapReduce to get that answer. And moving hundreds of petabytes of data uh, in that fashion is prohibitively expensive. And that's, uh, that all refers to the fact that the data in the space is dark. That's why most leaks, uh, most security leaks happen not out of primary storage, but out of secondary storage. Okay. So these are the three big problems we observed. And the next slide talks about our vision. What we want to do uh, is we want to take all those workflows that I showed in secondary storage in my last slide. We want to build one infinitely scalable platform. It's a web scale platform that scales like Google. You keep adding nodes to it, it scales uh, both in compute and storage. Uh, performance and capacity both scale linearly. We want to put all those workloads on this one platform, leading to uh, what we refer to as uh, hyperconverged secondary storage. So this is a consolidation of secondary storage uh, on one platform. So let's quickly look at how this vision addresses those three big problems I talked about in my last slide. Fragmentation was the first problem. That's gone because all the workflows sit on one platform. Right? There is no need to go juggle multiple licenses and deal with multiple vendors and blah, blah, blah. Inefficiency is gone because this one platform is being used all the time. If test and dev is running on this platform, it is able to use the whole platform. There are no silos in this platform that cannot be used by any, any workload. There are no unnecessary copies on this platform. Uh, it does global deduplication, so we don't have the problem of copy, copies floating throughout your data center. Right? And finally, backups are no longer an insurance policy because this platform is not just doing backups, it's also doing other stuff. It's doing analytics, it's doing file shares, it's doing uh, uh, test and dev. So, so it's no longer a piece of infrastructure that's sitting there as a necessary evil, just there as an insurance policy. It's act actively being used uh, for purposes other than backups. So inefficiency is gone. And the last problem I pointed out was dark data. Well, since analytics is one of the workflows that sits on this platform, that analytics can be used to get answers in place, um, to get, to throw some light on that dark data. For example, if our customers need to find 
if there is a social security number stored in plain text on this platform, they can by running that analytics in place. There's no need to migrate the data out of this platform, right? So our contention is that we are looking at the secondary storage space holistically, whereas in the last 10 years, there's been lit little innovation in this space and whatever innovation there has been there has only looked at point problems in this space, be it data domain, which looked at duplication <coughs> within a box, uh, what about when you have more data domains, what, what, what about test and that, what about analytics? Uh, and a number of other companies that have innovated in this space, but our contention is they've only looked at a point problem. And we are the first one trying to look at this whole space holistically. I'll pause there, see if I can answer any questions. I see a question here. I've got one. Um, yeah. Is it a addressable market decision or an architecture decision to focus on secondary storage only? Uh, so I think it's a little bit of both. So first of all, the secondary storage market as de depicted by the iceberg is a very, very big market. The, the data there is much larger than primary storage, right? And architecturally, uh, if you think about it, there hasn't been any one company that has been able to have a solution in both uh, markets and, and has been successful in doing that because the focus is different. Um, even EMC had a separate company data domain to deal with the secondary part of the market and they deal with the primary part of, part of the market separately. So even from a business focus uh, point of view, we'd like to focus on the secondary storage which is A, there's a big problem in that space, B, the market is very big, and C, the primary storage market has already seen a bunch of innovation with companies like Pure Storage, Nutanix, and, and so on and so forth. So why be uh, another cog in the wheel there when there is this bigger part of the market waiting to uh, see some disruption? How large um, have you guys tested scale on the community right. for, from nodes and from actual storage space? Right. So uh, one of our customers, uh, I can tell you the actual deployments, uh, is has a cluster that's more than 60 nodes at this point. Um, I will talk about uh, our ability to also run virtual appliances in the cloud. We hope to test much larger scales in the cloud uh, shortly, but so far, because uh, you know we were not in the cloud so far, and uh, it requires money and uh, investment to put up a big system. Um, that's pretty much the largest that we've tested. But that said, I would say that you know a uh, background of uh, me and my team, we come from building systems like um, the Google file system and uh, Nutanix. The Google file system, the average size of the cluster was 10,000 nodes at the time when I was in Google. I'm sure it's larger even now. So it's the same DNA, it's the same uh, similar philosophy that's been used to build the system. There is no uh, queen node or there is no special uh, thing in the system mm. that can become a bottleneck. It is really embarrassingly parallel uh, in that sense. Um, there is no central database um, that's used that can limit the performance. That, oh, that part is special and we really got to focus on putting more and more resources on that part. Otherwise, it won't scale. So there is no such thing in the architecture of the system. So theoretically, it should scale to very, very large numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't tested the limits of that scalability. At, so that's, at 60 nodes, what's the, uh, what's the storage capacity of that? Right. So uh, every node comes with uh, 25 terabytes or so uh, of raw capacity. And so you can multiply that by 60 and you, know, you, know, you get the answer. And what, what workloads is that particular customer using it for? And what did it replace? It replaced uh, some of the legacy uh, backup vendors like Data Domain, and um, I think um, the backup software was uh, uh, Veritas, I believe. And uh, but but most of our customers are actually using us for multiple purposes. Uh, I will show in my future slides. Uh, it's a hybrid converged platform. The backup software also comes embedded with it. You can use our backup software to do VMware backups, for example, and a number of other kinds of backups. But you can also, you know, if you are tied into some licensees uh, through existing backup vendors, you can continue using them and use us as just target storage. And some of our bigger uh, uh, customers are actually leveraging us for multiple of these needs. Um, so let me go forward. And so first of all, I want to say it's a big vision. We recognize that, uh, you know, it's all about focus. And let me show you how we are not going there and saying, let's rip and replace everything. We are a very leg-in solution. Let me show you how a traditional data center might exactly look like and how cohesity comes in and kind of in a very iterative way uh, cleans up uh, and simplifies the data center, right? So my next few slides talk about that. So secondary storage is complex. Let's draw a picture showing a legacy data center that we typically see at customer sites, how complex it can become. So let's start first with depicting the primary storage. This is not where we add value. 
this is just so shown for illustration. So the first few things I'm going to show, there are a bunch of uh, virtualized environments, maybe running VMware. In the middle, we have some physical servers, maybe running uh, Windows. And at the right, we have some databases. Uh, you know, that's a typical, typically what we see in production at a, at a typical customer. And let's now start building secondary uh, storage. Uh, the first part is backups. So let's say, uh, let's throw in a media server. Media servers are hardware devices where we typically run our backup software. And that backup software is being used to backup uh, those three primary environments. But that's not enough uh, to basically complete the backup picture. You need a little bit more. You need some target storage appliances. And here we show some dedupe appliances. Uh, notice, though, uh, typically these dedupe appliances don't scale out. So, so we have fragmented deduplication over here. Uh, which means that if you if you back up uh, uh, some VM onto this appliance and back up another VM onto a different appliance, uh, these two don't get deduplicated against each other. So that's fragmented deduplication. That's not enough either. You, all this environment is being managed by what is uh, a master server. So my point is just to do a simple job of doing backups, we have hardware silos and we have fragmented deduplication. That's how complex the legacy backup infrastructure is. But let's, that's not all in secondary storage. Let's see what else is there. Well, we may have some, some tapes, uh, and that's one more vendor. Uh, so the backup software you know, will interact with that vendor and write data to tape for long-term retention. Um, and we may have some test and dev. Uh, I'm sorry, we may have a cloud gateway. There's a lot of interest in the public cloud. So there's a, the cloud gateway that writes to the public cloud, and that's keeping a copy of that data that's being backed up. Uh, we may have some test and dev environments um, that are keeping one more copy of whatever is being backed up, right? Data that uh, is being used in production. Developers typically like to uh, work with that data when they do test and dev, and that's why they have one more copy here. Actually, they probably have multiple copies because any big company have multiple departments that might be running test and dev environments. Then we may have some big data stuff going on, and that's one more copy of the data that's being backed up. Uh, you know, you take the data in primary environments, copy it out to an analytics environment, and then run some sort of Hadoop or Spark or Splunk or what have you. And then we may have some files and objects, some file shares, uh, and that's uh, possibly one more copy. So this is how complex uh, the, the secondary environment is. Uh, it's very fragmented, right? Uh, it's highly inefficient, lots of copies, um, lots of parts of the infrastructure that's, that's not being used all the time. And there's plenty of dog data here. Um, people don't know what's going on, right? That's the mess we typically go into when we you know, ta start talking to customers. So now let's talk about uh, how Kuhizdi can, can, can simplify this stuff, right? So well, we are, again, we are very lagging. We don't go and say to customers, let's replace all of this with Kuhizdi. Let's start with the minimum uh, you know, change possible. So we go and say that the next time this fills up, or you come up, the, the target storage fills up, or it comes up for a hardware refresh, you can consider Kuhizdi. In this picture, um, you know, I replaced that with Kuhizdi, but you can also put the Kuhizdi on the side. So that's the Kuhizdi data platform, and we expose industry standard protocols like SMB and NFS. And so you can have your existing backup software writing to the Kuhizdi, right? No other change uh, in this picture, right? So very lag in. But what's the, why would someone do this? Uh, well, here is one advantage. If the Kuhizdi fills up, you can scale it infinitely, right? You can continue to manage it using a single pane of glass, and it scale out. It does global deduplication. It doesn't have fragmented deduplication. So whatever is, is backed up to, whatever is written to one node out there, it always gets deduplicated against any other node. That's one of the advantages. Second advantage is uh, single pane of glass. You don't need to manage all that complicated infrastructure. It's uh, all very simple to manage. But that's not where we stop. The <coughs> next thing our customers can do uh, once they come up with license renewals for that backup software running on those media servers, what they can do is get rid of that complicated infrastructure running the backup software and replace it with the Kuhizdi Data Protect software um, that's sold separately, but it lives on this cluster. It's not a separate appliance. It's embedded. It's, it's hyper-converged into the same system. So now this picture um, has completely taken care of data protection. We can even write to tapes. So through that single pane of glass, you can even configure us to write to tapes. We can even act as the cloud gateway. No, need, no reason to um, buy a separate cloud gateway. And I'll talk about the cloud in my next few slides. But, but at this time, we have completely taken care of data protection. And I might add, this is precisely our go-to market when we go and sell. Um, you know, we try to say that buy us for data protection. 
uh, be it the, uh, the, the data uh, platform or, or inclusive of, of data protect uh, software. Uh, and the rest of the innovation we'll do in the future. So we, we don't promise um, we'll clean out the whole environment up front. That's our go-to-market our, our go market is data protection. I always like to say the foundation behind a company is a big vision, but then the go-to-market has to be very specific. The minimum viable product for us is that data protection product. But here is what we do um, you know, to simplify the environment further. We can get rid of those th the, the storage for those test and dev environments and, and have our customers um, get that directly from Cohesities. We, we have um, the industry's best cloning technology through our snap trees. Um, you know, feel free to look that up on the web. Through that, we can create clones and have our customers run test and dev directly off of us. Analytics can be run in place. Uh, and, and now there is no need to create copies, move around data. Uh, analytics software can sit on the Cohesity and run analytics in place. We actually showed a live demo of this in one of the past storage field days where we um, extracted social security numbers uh, from the data that was stored in the data platform. And finally, the, the, the storage for the files and objects can be removed and uh, you know, our customers can just uh, talk to us uh, to, to do file shares. Uh, you, you know, we export um, you know, distributed NFS and distributed SMB. And uh, today we are also going to announce that uh, we are coming up with support for even the S3 protocol. Uh, and so I'll, I'll let uh, Poor talk more about that. But, but this is the picture we'd like to, to show you. This is what we offer. This is hyperconverged secondary storage. Contrast this with the complexity that we started with. Here, with one single UI, we can manage the whole of secondary storage. There are no unnecessary copies. Uh, and this is the simplicity we'd like to bring to the world. Right? That's what we are about. Let's talk a little bit about the cloud a little bit. So, so we have already released uh, several cloud features. Here is the crazy data platform, the first feature uh, first of all, we interact with uh, most public clouds, um, the, the Azure, uh, Amazon, and, and Google. And we can also interact with the private cloud, like OpenStack. Anything that's NFS or uh, S3 compliant, we can interact with. The first feature that we released is called Cloud Archive, where we take the data in the data platform. Our customers can come to our UI, set a policy that maybe uh, once, a, once a week, take an image on this data platform, and, and put it uh, in archival storage. So it just gets moved to... Um, te uh, technologies like uh, Amazon Glacier or, or, or the equivalent ones and other platforms, right? So this is a great way and a very manageable way to, to do long-term retention of data. Cloud is great for, for data at rest, and that's what this, this, this leverage is. If you have some sort of yep. a disaster that takes down to your, your cohesive data, yeah. ma data platform, right. what happens to the data that's at the that cloud archive? Nothing happens there. So I will also, give me a few minutes, I'll also talk about other aspects of disaster recovery. But for archival, Nothing happens to the data. So what you can do is if the cohesity goes away, you can either get a virtual appliance from, from us or you can get another cohesity and it'll start restoring the data. Okay. We, can, we use all WAN optimization techniques, uh, you know, like uh, deduplication, compression on the wire. Um, all the data that's put out there is encrypted with 256-bit encryption. The keys never leave the appliance. This appliance can work with a key management server. So all that data is very protected. Uh, and uh, and so, so think about this long-term retention, the data like, kind of like a replacement for tape. Uh, but I have other cloud technologies that can actually even fail over um, it, when this QHD goes down. We support remote replication, so you can run QHD is another data center. But give me a, a minute before I come to that. Sure. The second uh, technology that we've released is called cloud clearing. And here we use a different set of cloud technologies, like Amazon S3, which are a little bit faster. The SLAs are faster than uh, Amazon Glacier. And the best way to view this technology is uh, just to think of the cloud as extending the storage in the cohesity. So in the cohesity, we have SSDs and we have hard drives. Hard data sits on SSDs. Uh, when it gets colder, it waterfalls down to hard drives, totally based on customers, the policies that customers set. But when, when it gets colder still, it can waterfall down to Amazon S3. Right? This is a great way if uh, you know, you know, someone is running a test and have environment, and uh, temporarily they need a lot of storage. Rather than buying a lot of hardware and then later it goes idle, you can just connect the cloud to us and we'll spill the excess capacity into the cloud. And it, since we are you, yeah, go ahead. I was just say, is that just S3 or are you doing anything with Anything Bob? that's S3 compliant, uh, we can do with, with this. Okay. Um, so OpenStack, uh, you know, S3, anything that's S3 compliant can be worked this way. Do you have an additional license or anything for cloud storage? What's yeah, today, today we, it's all bundled in. Today we don't. Um, our price, uh, today we only charge separately for the data platform and the data protect. Everything else is kind of bundled in, but pricing is subject to change in the future. But today we don't do that. 
so, uh, today it's just you know our customers get it for free pretty much. Um, so that's cloud hitting. Uh, let's talk about the third technology, which is very exciting. It's called Cloud Replicate, right? Now, QHD can, uh, it supports remote replication, so you can run a QHD in a remote data center, but some customers don't have remote data centers uh, to replicate to. So what they can do is uh, they can run the cloud edition of QHD in, in Amazon EC2 or something like that, and then uh, set up remote replication between the two. So now if this guy fails, um, you can fail over to the cloud. So it supports um, disaster recovery. Uh, and, and now that the data that you have on premise is also in the cloud, rather than spinning up test and dev workloads here, you can actually spin them up on the cloud. So it's a great way to get a hybrid cloud solution and to choose uh, where you can uh, you want to run test and dev and so on and so forth. And finally, uh, analytics. Uh, I'm a big fan of let's move compute to the data and not the data to the compute because in the legacy world, that's what's happening. Uh, people have all these silos, they move data to the silos and then run compute on that. We are all about let's move uh, compute to the data. So if the, if the data is sitting in the cloud, let's also move computation to the cloud and do stuff like analytics close to where the data is. So these are the, uh, the cloud technologies that uh, you know, we, are, we have come up with, we've released, and more exciting stuff uh, we're gonna release on the cloud uh, as, uh, as time goes on, so stay tuned. So uh, in summary, I'd like to summarize that what our vision is to consolidate secondary storage um, and, sim and our MVP is to simplify data protection because there also we need some consolidation. Uh, uh, we are big fans of making the data productive. Um, so don't let your backups just be an insurance policy. Let's make it a lo little bit more productive. Run tests and dev off of that. Run analytics off of, off of that. L let's throw a light on that dark data sitting there. And I never lead with costs, but uh, our TCO, one of the uh, you, you know, despite all that increased functionality, the price actually goes down. We can actually cut prices by more than 50% uh, compared to just the target storage. And if you bundle in also the backup software, we can cut prices by up to 80%. So, so what's not to like? Um, and so I'd give a pause here, see if you guys have any questions. Otherwise, I'll pass the buck to Apoor, who will uh, talk about the architectural bits. Is the virtual appliance out today? It's going to be shortly out, right? It's almost out. Uh, like, what's the timeline on that? Uh, th this year. OK. Is that available to be run? on-prem, the virtual appliance, as uh, well as It's a virtual cloud, appliance. Or? You can run it anywhere. Um, in fact, we're you know, even thinking of using that for demos and stuff. Uh, you know, our sales guys can take it around customers and use that for demos and stuff like that. But, but the primary reason we built it was for, for the cloud replicate. 